33 minutes past the hour. It is the Jeff Santo Show that you are tuned into. We are here every Monday through Friday, 3 to 6 Eastern Time, 12 to 3 Pacific. You know, I'm just looking at the monitor here and it makes me want to puke. Medicare coverage helpline with Joe Namath. We are going to talk to our friends at the Committee to Preserve Social Security next week. Um, our good friends uh, there, uh, Max. Uh, we'll be talking to us, Max Richmond. He's the uh, head there of Committee to Preserve Social Security and Medicare. And, uh, you know, just ripping people off left and right, seniors, uh, with such tragedy with this Medicare Advantage BS. We'll get into that next week. But we are going to go out to the 206 right now, folks. He is the great MTC. He is the renaissance man of the Jeff Santos Show. He's the only guy that will have a, a lead-in with his own music, his own guitar. And um, if you listen to this show, folks, uh, you know why we call him the renaissance sons man he's a great uh, executive director of democracy watch news he is a great activist has covered uh, a whole slew of protests going back to the year 2000 with the wto stuff and so forth in seattle and uh, of course he's with us every friday most of the time at 5 30 and on friday this week you get a double header a double dip with mr mtc he was with us on tuesday as well because he wasn't with us last week so here he is mr mark Taylor Canfield says hello. How are you, Mark? Well, I'm here in the studio again, and that must be one of the loudest intros anybody has, too. But this is Mark Taylor Canfield <laughs> yes. live from the NBC <laughs> Recording Studios. In Seattle, in the city of rock and roll, with my favorite electric guitar, my Flying V, on a typically rainy uh, day, recovering from a night on the town for Seattle's Art Walk, where my friend Steve Gilbert had an uh, exhibit up on Capitol Hill on Seattle's music and culture history. It was really great, so I'm really proud of all my creative friends here. And so a shout-out to Evil Walker and the Black Tones on their Northwest tour, and Marshall Hugh and the Marshall Law Band. They're hosting live outdoor shows here in Seattle uh, every Friday night, free shows, and some of the best musicians in town are going to be playing there, including yours truly. And we also uh, are rebuilding our rehearsal space because we just had a fire. But you know what? I was I went to MoHi, which is the Museum of History and Industry in Seattle, last night for Art Walk, and all the major museums are free here. And uh, I saw this exhibit on the Northwest music scene and music history, and it just kind of blew my mind because... There are so many talented bands that have toured the world from Seattle, and a lot of them I've never, ever mentioned on your show. So here's a quick partial shout-out, okay? The Fleet Foxes, Harvey Danger, Macklemore, The Melvins, Alice in Chains, The Presidents of the United States of America, Grammy winner Brandy Carlisle, Dave Matthews Band, Hart, Queensryche, The Melvins, and then... You know, I would mention the rest, but we would run out of time. We would spend the entire show doing nothing but talking <laughs> about talented bands. Not that Boston doesn't have talented bands and also great sports, which we can talk about at some point. But, um, yeah, I just wanted to give a shout-out. Seattle, uh, seeing that exhibit at Mohai really inspired me. I'm so glad I moved to Seattle. I'm so glad I'm here. And what was most interesting is hearing the musicians say, oh, well, we just love music. We were kind of surprised when we became famous. Like, uh, that's not why we did it. And that totally is the Seattle epic that's the seattle music scene job people do not do it here for the money or the glamour or the stardom like la they're here to do music and they love their music and whatever happens happens but number one the music matters and the audience is the same way they they really love the musicians because of their music not because of their bling or their image or their you know million dollars. yeah it's it's you know it's grunge land it's it's the place where flannel jackets you know in the summertime we even got the stupidity uh <laughs> of wearing it in hot dc uh when it was the hot thing in the 90s hey i want to i want to do something uh that we have never never talked about on or off the air i want you to because i know you're a massive fan of Jimi hendrix i want you to name your top guitar that you come on and play that great hendrix sound and i want you to name it like bb king named his guitar lucille i want you to name yours jimmy in reverence to the great Jimi hendrix how about that mark No answer. I, I guess he didn't like the idea. Oh, I see why. Because he dropped. <laughs> I was wondering why I was getting silence. Okay. Uh, let's go to another phone line where our good friend MTC is back uh, yeah, with us. Yeah, sorry, Jeff. 
I got, <laughs> I got muted there that. accidentally. That okay. Was, that was uh, a mistake. That was my mistake. But you asked me about Jimi Hendrix, and then uh, I didn't hear the rest of the question. Well, what I want to do, in, 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 in similar to our good friend, uh, the late, great B.B. Uh, King, who named his guitar Lucille, because of yes. the fact that you play that great uh, lick uh, that Jimi Hendrix uh-huh. made so famous, that you name your guitar, particularly when you come on this show, Jimmy. You know, I'm on a on great uh, tradition and uh, the great respect uh, for Mr. Hendrix that you name your guitar Jimmy. What about that? You can do that, right? Well, I do have a song which will soon be very popular. So you're, but it's uh, I have the, I have our new buttons out, the MTC and the Rebel Saints buttons, and our brand new release that's getting ready to go out. But uh, uh, I, I have a song called "The Glorious Machine." And it's this rock ballad thing. Uh, kind of reminds me a little bit of what maybe Bowie did with, you know, like, you know, uh, is there life on Mars or whatever. Kind of a, a ballad, a rock ballad. And it's about, well, it could be about many things, right? You know that I'm really into Formula E electric uh, car racing. So right. it could be about a car. It could be about your guitar. So I've always referred to it as my as my beautiful machine or my glorious machine is when I'm on a really, really happy day. But, you know, the only problem with naming you can name it Jimmy. is that most uh, guitar players, who are male at least, name their guitars after a female, like a boat. But we do that oh, because the I shape see. of the guitar is very much like a lady. You know, it really is, especially an acoustic guitar. I'm not, I won't go into details about that. But Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, get, I get the whole symbolic thing. Yeah, I understand. Um, well... You know, if you uh, let me think about a guitar player, maybe Eva. I could call it Eva after the guitar player for the Black Tones because she's an amazing guitar player yeah, and we get along yeah, really well, yeah. and she would appreciate that. Yeah. Then, um, all right. Hey, one of the things that we uh, Mark is Mark and I are on Twitter all the time. Sometimes we tweet at each other. Sometimes we tweet uh, about other great things happening. But he came up with a great idea the other day. And we've talked about it on the show. And I want to talk this out. And we'll take some calls from our good friend John in Minneapolis as well on this. And that is the idea, because of the fact, and we talked about this with Harvey Allen Minsky and John Nichols earlier, because of the fact that we have empty leadership in the Democratic Party, uh, Mr. Schumer, Mr. Biden, and uh, Ms. Pelosi, that we need to bring in Steve Kerr. We need to bring in these families of victims. We need to bring in hockey coaches. We talked about our good friend Doug McLean earlier today. And let them talk at will at the hearings national tv will pick it up and and so forth well the musicians have their own stage literally their own stage whether it's eddie vetter or bruce springsteen or whatever and i love your idea mark taylor canfield of letting the musicians lead the way here on gun safety on the gun violence problems we have in this country only in this country we don't have it in canada as doug mcclain talked about we don't have it in other parts of the world that are democracies. I, I, I think I think what you're saying is very, very true. And I'm hoping that some national figures, and I mean, I'm not saying that the local folks in Seattle, the evil walkers and so forth, can't do it. That's fine. But I would like to see some people whether it's, uh, you know, of course, it doesn't have to be Americans and if Bono wants to do it and so forth. But you got... Great American artist, uh, the likes of Eddie Vedder, the likes of Dave Grohl, you know, uh, Springsteen, you go on and on and on. They have respectability. In fact, in the case of Grohl and uh, Springsteen, they have played for the president, President Obama in the past. So it's, you know, they're not uh, ill-equipped to get involved in these national discussions. I think what you said is fantastic. I hope they do it. I really do, because we need leadership when it's not coming from Washington, D.C., or in some states in some Capitol Hill, like in Texas, or uh, state capitals, like in Texas. Well, we saw how effective, you, well, we saw how effective farm aid was, and a, a lot of other, uh, you know, with Willie Nelson, a lot of other big concert series that really... Yeah, live aid nas- you know, internationally, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And by the way, be- before I answer, I just have to say this. One, I have to remember to, to actually plug my music at some point because I always forget that the band is like, Mark, tell them where our website is. But I have to compliment you because I keep tweeting out there that, you know, the Jeff Santos show is the best talk show in the United States. And today you just proved my point because you and John Nichols and Harvey Kay, who's a cool guy who I, I still have yet to 
do a, a video conference with. Sorry, Har- Harvey, we both got busy that week. But there's, you know, Alan Minsky, uh, your first guest. Oh, my gosh. The, Doug the, McLean. Uh, the coach. Doug McLean. Yeah, coach my McLean. Gosh, yeah. that, was, that was amazing. That was like uh, you guys were on fire. You were hitting all the points that I really want to hear, and you're not going to hear that anywhere in Monopoly, you know, corporate media. And I'd much rather listen to you and your guests than anybody on MSNBC or NPR or any of those other, you know, three-letter words or whatever, four-letter words. But, you know, I just want people to know (laughs) that this is a really special thing. I've been in media for a long time. I was doing interviews as a kid, you know, about different activist issues and things. And this is rare to have such a, a, a group of intelligent, well-meaning, well-spoken, well-educated, and and sane people in these times, you know, speaking the truth to people because we really need it. So now that I've, you know, you can send me a check if you want, Jeff. I don't, no, don't. That was that was really because from the heart. Hey, but your, answer, your your twenty bucks is totally in the mail, man. <laughs> no, it's totally true. But to answer your question, I was no, hoping I think you that appreciate that. Idea, that. Yeah, I was hoping that the idea of the concert would go viral somehow, and I tried to get the word out there. I do think that it's time for that, and I highly recommend, you know, whether it's on this show or Hartman's show or anywhere else I get a chance to speak, I want to to get that meme out there and say, listen, musicians, Neil Young, others, you know, it's time to get together as a family. And, you know, if, if people want me to help organize it, I'm, even, I'm ready to do that. But we need to uh, speak out and we need to start uh, touring and putting together large concerts and inviting uh, some kids who understand this issue and why they're so afraid of the NRA and why all this gun craziness needs to stop. We need to invite them to speak just like they did in Seattle, you know, to, to an amazed crowd when you have high school kids. And even now, elementary school and younger kids, you know, who have been through stuff like this, they can tell you stories that will just, you know, make you cry. And then you bring in uh, musicians like they had Dave Matthews and Brandy Carlisle came out and sang some Bob Dylan songs and they did some of the original stuff. That was a really beautiful moment. It helps heal people during times of tragedy. And it's also very good for continuing the dialogue, which has to happen. We can't let this just stop. This cannot be one of those 24-hour news cycles, which I'm so familiar with these days as a journalist, or two-hour news cycles. Um, we, we can't drop it. We can't move on to the next story. We don't have, you know, who cares what Trump said today? We need to deal with this issue now. And I totally agree with your former guest that there needs to be uh, a new attitude amongst whoever, whatever you want to call yourself, whether you're an independent or a Democrat or a Democratic Socialist or Green Party member. Just get out there and don't stop until the goals are met. No more of this mealy mouth, wishy washy, neoliberal, oh, we'll go along to get along. Not Nonsense. It's not getting us anywhere. It's been going on for far too long. I saw it with, you know, even though I got to meet him, I saw it with Bill Clinton. I saw it with Obama. It's time to stop that nonsense and move on and listen to the young folks who know what they're talking about because they're experiencing life on the streets. They're not in some ivory tower in some corporate media office or in some, you know, uh, cozy little uh, office in Washington, D.C. They're actually out on the streets having to deal with kids with guns. And, and crazy things going on in their neighborhoods and racism in their police departments and, you know, a total elimination of the middle class and an increase in poverty and homelessness across the country. If that isn't enough to light the fire under some of our Democratic Party leaders, then I don't know what would, Jeff. They did a decent job during the pandemic keeping us all going and keeping this culture and society moving ahead. I, I give them credit for that. Pramila Jayapal and especially the progressives in Congress did a good job of, of trying to help people with basically what democratic socialist programs that now they've tried to end, you know, but we're actually lifting people out of poverty. And uh, we need to continue that as well. I mean, some of the social stresses that people are experiencing are not just gun violence. It's also economic violence. And you can talk to a lot of people living in tents all across the country who will tell you a lot about that and how, and how they're treated by the police and the mayors of their own cities, like, like some kind of untouchables and, you know, permanent underclass that never will have political power. That's a shame because there are millions of people suffering right now who don't feel that they have anybody in politics representing their point of view. And, you know, Democrats have a perfect chance to do this if they want. The country's ready if they want to step up. And I totally support uh, Nomiki, uh, Konst, uh, Konst and um, all of the other uh, progressive candidates running across the country. She's running for Senate in New York. 
and the state legislature, right. even those races are really important, right down to your city council and your school board. We need to get progressives out there and people who have who aren't um, tied to the money interests, who aren't getting so much money from the, in Seattle, the corporate real estate developers, that they don't have a mind of their own anymore. They're like little puppets that just move when they're told. Uh, we can't have that anymore. And I don't think the young people are going to stand for it much longer, Jeff. We're going to have a lot of marches in the streets. June 11th is National uh, Day Against Gun Violence in, um, in the United States, and it's being organized a lot by a lot of students. So look for huge demonstrations. There will definitely be a huge rally in uh, Seattle on that day, next, not this Saturday, but the Saturday after, I guess. No doubt. Uh, we're talking with our good friend Mark Taylor Canfield here on the Jeff Santo Show. I want to bring in our uh, a great caller from the uh, great state of Minnesota, John, here momentarily. Um, again, folks, uh, we're going to spend a lot of time next week, um, hopefully with a few guests from Washington, a few Democratic Congress people who, you know, have some cojones to come on this show and, and talk about why we have not seen action and uh, and call out the likes of Mansion and Cinema and others and the entire Republican Party party writ large a to z um about this and this something has to happen so we're going to try to do as much as we can and you know and having great contributors like our friend mark taylor canfield uh you know pushes us to do it even more uh all right let's go up to uh the great uh state of minneapolis minnesota and uh talk to our good friend uh mr john you are next with mtc and I, I tell you, uh, John, I know you're a big fan of more folk music. I think that makes a big difference in mobilizing people. I know that Bernie had a lot of uh, events with, uh, you know, top line musicians, you know, some of the younger bands, the Vampire Weekends and, and others and so forth over the last couple of years and uh, last couple of times he's running. Yeah. I think it makes a big difference. Yeah, he had the uh, backup band for Prince was uh, the last rally that I went to, and uh, yeah, it was fantastic. A uh, very professional group of musicians, and um, you know, you couldn't ask for better in terms of the whole e- event. I mean, even Bernie is entertaining, and how energetic he was. He spoke for over an hour and 30 minutes, I think, and people were just, you know, uh, hang, hung on his every word. It was amazing. And, you know, when, uh, he, you know, when he was Turner in was Seattle, there. when he was in Tacoma, it was a rock concert. They had the, the stadium full of yeah. people. They had Portugal, the man opening, and a, and some Native right. American ceremonies and prayers to open the show. Yeah. And then when he visited Seattle for yeah. the first time that I'm aware of, well, the first time he came to talk about rent control, which was years ago when he was mayor of Burlington. And I actually got to meet him then, which blew my mind as a kid. But then later he came here for his campaign, and he where did he hold his first fundraiser? At the Comet Tavern, which is one of the most grungy kind of dive, you know, authentic rock clubs in <laughs> Seattle. Where, you know, yuppies just don't hang out, man. There's too much graffiti in the bathroom. You know what I'm saying? But that's where he went because he wanted to meet with the people on Capitol Hill, especially in Seattle, who really supported him. And that's where they hang out. And a lot of them were musicians that yeah. hang out there because the Comet has had some great shows over the years. So there you go. Bernie understands this stuff. Yeah. I don't think a lot of the other... Uh, Washington Beltway Democrats get it, but he does, which is nice to see. Yeah, uh, you know, but uh, the, the the issue is he gets to, you, know, you have to run for, for such a high office in order to make these messages that everybody wants to hear. I think that that was the whole genius of the whole thing was that, you know, wow, he's actually saying things that uh, we all knew, but nobody, you know, but the the media just shuts it down, and the Republican Party in this issue with gun control, uh, you know, basically the attitude of Mitch McConnell, of Cruz, of Abbott is talk to the hand. We're not listening, and we don't have to, and piss on you, and we're going to win. Yeah, well, you know what you got to do? you got to give them a middle finger right back to that hand. <laughs> That's the way I well, look at I, it. Well, obviously, yeah. You, yeah. you have to get in their face. Like Beto O'Rourke, uh, Sky News, uh, and uh, I would love to do that. I would love to get into Cruz's face. I once called yeah. that his um, office and said, you know, this was with the shutdown. I said, why don't you just have your own little banana republic down there? You could secede and get the heck hey. off the rest of our backs. We're sick of you. You know, I, know I, had this, I didn't like earlier when I, yeah. I was listening to uh, Harvey talk about 
and John, I think it was John, talk about uh, Wisconsin nice, right? And Seattle used to have that reputation, yeah. too, as the, the diplomatic, kind city. But I have to tell you something. It, uh, when you allow other people to act so inappropriately that not only do they harm people with their actions, but they set a standard yeah. for other people to do the same thing, you cannot enable them. Yes. You cannot handle them with kid gloves and no, pretend yeah, that you're, you're, right. Not you're right. You yeah, have to yeah, confront yeah. them directly, yeah. confront their behavior, accept yeah. the consequences of yeah. your actions and theirs, and move from there. I'm not saying fight people or get violent. I'm just saying you have yeah, to... Yeah, we don't want to condone behavior. violence and that we never do that. That's yeah. why I say at the well, end of my show every we, day, uh, you know, all... keep on fighting peacefully. Peacefully. Yeah. Yes. I mean, But you do have yeah, to confront yeah, people. Fully, you cannot enable you them. You cannot enable them. Yeah, the fascists in the Republican yeah. Party cannot yeah. be enabled anymore, and a lot of Democrats have done that. They just let them say what they have to say, even though they know it's fascism. Yeah, no, they have to call it out and, and call it what it is. And you know how dispiriting is it? You know, for uh, you know leading Democrats to go to Cuellar in Texas. You know, uh, this was before, I suppose, the the shooting, but still, who supports gun rights? You know, people are not stupid. This is. And I don't know what what it to say about that. It is so depressing and dispiriting and uh, and a- aggravating. I'm angry at this point. And uh, you know, I, I mean, yeah, I don't want to, uh, you know, <laughs> get violent. But uh, you know, when things are getting more and more fascistic, I knew people who were uh, trained as priests who were violent, they joined the underground. Right. Uh, well, I they, think what has to happen, to John, it's not about it's I not mean, about violence. Yeah. It's I think it's about this scenario yeah. that, again, we're trying to put together an alternative part of the Democratic Party. And again, I don't believe that, you know, we can all of a sudden start a new party up. But if we can take over, uh, you know, and have enough uh, progressive right. Democrats, a lot of the pink hats, people who will follow, right. you know, anything that's, you know, is in front of them, yeah. you know, will follow yeah. us because we're winning. We're winning in Pennsylvania in the, in the congressional yeah. races. We're winning in in, in, uh, in Oregon uh, and, and in, in some parts of Texas and so on and so forth. That's what I think we have to do. Right. If we do do that, how many people times? will follow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I no, agree. agree. And you just That's have true. to keep on. Yeah, you just have to keep on. You have to it. set, but, I don't uh, know who said it before, yeah. you have to set a goal and refuse to, to stop until yeah. you reach that goal. And if it's an honorable goal, but, uh, you know, and it's a I, goal I'm kind of frustrated help other people, myself. Stick yeah. to it. Yeah. Don't give up. Don't give in. Yeah. Don't become cynical. Don't become apathetic because that's what they would like. They benefit. The, the corporate lobbyists yep. and uh, the right wingers, they totally benefit on people's I, lack I, I, of, yeah. of interest in going to the polls. Yeah. And they try to keep people so they, and they enjoy that they won't show up and vote. That's part of the right. strategy. And they enjoy, peop- they enjoy people being despondent because it makes them feel good. These people are sick. This is a mental illness yeah, that is across this whole culture. It's not individually, you know, they are the no, sick ones. No, look, it, 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 it is a problem, uh, John, but, you know, it, it really, um, I'm, I'm, I'm not a licensed therapist, but <laughs> yeah. I can tell you that, you know, you should think about the fact that uh, there are uh, a number of people who agree with you. That's why you have a Congresswoman Omar. Oh, That's yeah, why you have yeah, Keith Ellison. Yeah. So you got some good people there, and, and, and you keep on fighting, my friend. we got to run, my man, but appreciate well, you always. Yep, okay. uh, have yourself a great weekend. Yeah, I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you, John. Uh, just a couple of seconds here, uh, MTC. I, I must tell you, uh, John, and we have so many great callers and great listeners to the show. It's just an example of people who want change, and they're sick and tired of getting, well, this excuse here. We don't have 50 votes. We don't have 60 votes. We don't have this. We don't have that. We'll make it happen. You know, we're not here to, to give, uh, you know, a wine awards, whining awards, and uh, that needs to stop. MTC, we're going to check you out on YouTube, right? Yeah, YouTube, Democracy Watch News. I also still have articles up at Huffington Post, Keep Out, Daily Post. And you can hear my music on SoundCloud. See you next week, Jeff. Have a great weekend, man. Keep safe out there in the 206. Thank you. I want to thank Ron Carter for producing this broadcast. Thank you all. For listening, folks, great, great show today. Catch uh, podcasts at uh, 6.30 p.m. coming up, half an hour, RevolutionRadioNetwork.com. Have a great weekend. My name is Jeff Santos, and right now it is my time to say I gotta go.